Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new episode of the series Obsidian Vault Creation. In this new episode I will talk about nodes creation and their organization within the vault. We will create some templates and set the categories section to give you a better understanding of what it means to have a top level overviews of nodes sorted by category. Before we start, remember that if you subscribe to the Insider membership on my website, findstoneconsulting.net, you will be able to download the vault you see in this video and all the Obsidian Vault and Node templates I will create in the future directly from my website. And now, let's dive deep into it. First of all, let's take a quick recap of our Vault's folder structure. We have a folder dedicated to our attachments. This includes images, videos, PDFs, and so on. We also have a folder for our canvas and a journal folder. The journal folder contains four subfolders for daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly notes. I have already discussed this in the second episode of the series, so if you missed it, go check it out. Next, we have a generic notes folder where we store all our notes. There is the read later folder, a topic for a future video, designated for storing content we gather from various sources that we want to consume later, like articles, emails, videos, and so on. We also have a templates folder specifically for storing our templates. And finally, the main topic of this video, the categories folder, that provides a top level overviews of notes divided per category. This category section was inspired by a vault template published by Stefan Ango, the CEO of Obsidian. The goal is to minimize the number of folders required, yet retain easy access to our notes, which would be primarily stored in the notes folder. Let's first clarify what a category is. A category is basically an area of interest or a main topic that brings together several nodes. For instance, you could have a people category that brings together all nodes related to your contacts, or a books category that includes all nodes tied to the books you've read. Another example could be a recipes category which groups all your recipe nodes. You are free to create as many categories as you desire, they all share a common trait, their structure. So let's start by creating the template for our categories inside the templates folder, and let's call it category template. The template is pretty simple. I just add a property date field that I call created, and inside I write a templater script to retrieve the creation date. Make sure to switch to the source mode or you will not be able to insert the script in the date field. After that, I simply add a tags property where I insert the tag category. Lastly, to streamline the assignment of the node title and the h1 heading, I write the same script that, if you remember, we already used in the last episode for the monthly and yearly note template. Now, before we start defining our initial categories, let's open the settings and then Templator. In this section, we are going to add a new folder template. This way, whenever a new node is created within the Categories folder, the Category template will be automatically applied to it. So, let's create a couple of categories. We can create a Books category, a Recipes category, and the Movies category. And one thing I really like to do is to add an icon to each of them. For instance, the Books category could be identified by a Books icon. For the Recipes category, we can use a Chef Hat icon. And we can change its color to white. Lastly, a movie camera icon could represent the movies category.
Now I want to create one template for my book notes, one for my recipe notes, and one for my movie notes. Remember that these are just example, but you can use the same method to create all the templates and categories you want. Now, since the base structure is the same, I duplicate the category template and I start by creating the book template. First of all, let's change the tags field to book. Then I want to add a field called category, where I insert the internal link that points to the corresponding category notes. In this case, books. After that, you can add any property you want. For instance, you can add authors, topics, and rating. A small advice, when creating a new properties, ensure their names are versatile enough to be applicable across various types of nodes. Okay, now let's duplicate this template and create the recipe template. I change the category field from books to recipes. The tags field to recipe. And you can leave the authors and rating fields. But instead of the topics field, we can use for example a field that we call type. And lastly, let's create the movie template. Let's change the category field to movies. and the tags field to movie. Instead of authors, I can add a director field, an actors field, and use genres instead of topics. Now, in the next video of the series, we will streamline the node creation process using custom command. However, for now, I will manually assign templates to the nodes that I will create. So, let's create some notes. I start with a book note, for example, getting things done. And I insert the book template. The author is David Allen. And inside the topics field, I can write productivity and self-improvement. I do the same for some other notes, so I just speed up the video. Now that we have our notes stored inside the notes folder, it's time to build our top level overviews in each category note. To do that, I will write a simple data view query in each of them. If you are unfamiliar with data view, I will leave an introductory video I published some months ago about it in the description down below. So let's open the books category. You can start a data view query with the three backticks and data view. Inside this code block, I specify that I want to create a table without the default column that the table creates automatically. And now, I simply write the columns I want in my table. The first column will contain the link to the notes, and I want to name it Books. And then, I want another column that contains the authors. Now, I specify that I want to retrieve all the notes from the vault, excluding those within the templates folder, and only the notes that contain the link to this file this category note as value of the category property field. This is one of the reasons I inserted the internal link to the note category inside the category fields in each template. And as you can see, our book notes are now visible and organized within the proper category note. By clicking on any of these links, you will open the respective note. Also, to return to the category note, you simply have to click the link in the category field. 
Now I will copy the code block, paste it in the other two categories and simply do some adjustments. For the movies, I want to rename the first column as movies and add two more columns, director as director and actors as actors. For the recipes, I rename the first column as recipes and I add only a second column type as type. And that's a wrap. You can use as many folders or subfolders you want. However, a system like the one I showed you in this video can grant you a sense of freedom without constantly fretting over which folder would be the most appropriate for storing your notes. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Remember, you can follow me on X and Mastodon and you can also join my Discord server and subscribe to my website for further content about productivity, PKM and note taking. I will leave all the links in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, stay productive.